all right guys welcome back to another set of questions so in this video we'll be trying to go through number seven and go all the way up to number 12 okay so i'm going to go through every single question break it down as simple as possible so let's do this so jenny invests eight thousand five hundred dollars for three years in a savings account she gets 2.3 percent per year compound interest so this means in the money increases every single year by 2.3 percent compounded every year so how much will she have at the end of three years? Okay, so this is just a straightforward formula, nothing special here. So if you're familiar with this formula, it's always the original value, in this case, 8,500, times some multiplier, in this case, one plus minus the rate, will give us a new value. And if there's years involved or several periods, you put a power here, so in this case, three. Now, the original value is gonna be 8,500. The rate is gonna be an increase of 2.3%. So it'd be 8,500 times one plus, because you're increasing, 2.3%. Remember, use the percent button, and that'll give us our answer. Alternatively, if you prefer to change it to a decimal, 2.3% is the same as one plus 0 0.023. But I don't know why you would want to do that with a, when you have a calculator, because then you, you could just make a mistake by converting a decimal. Anyway, when you do this and you power it by three, you should get... 9100.092 and so on and they want the answer to correct the nearest dollar so in other words the nearest whole number so that would be about nine thousand one hundred dollars because rounding up this this value here well it's less than 50 and this is less than five ain't gonna round up okay so that's it nine thousand one hundred now next one Rami bought a house on the 1st of January 2015. So in 2015, the house increased in value by 15% and the next year decreased in value by 8%. So on the 1st of January 2017, so that's two years later by the way, the value of the house was this amount, $687,700. What was the value of the house on the 1st of January? In other words, what was the original value? So we can go back and use this previous formula, but you're probably thinking, like, hold on, this is only for like the same thing for several years. Actually, you can partition this part into several different multipliers. So for instance, because we're dealing with two different rates, if we had to rewrite the formula, it would be, for instance, if the house increased by 15%, it would be one plus 15% times one minus 8%. So this is kind of like, in a way, two different years, but with two different rates. This power here means it's increased by one plus 2.3%, one plus 2.3%. And another one plus two point three percent, so it kind of makes sense. And this anyway should give us a new value, which we're told is six thousand eight hundred, six hundred six hundred eighty seven thousand seven hundred dollars. Now to make your life super easy, just use some algebra. Literally make OV the subject. So we can say, all right, OV is going to equal. So literally divide this entire double bracket below this value. So it'd be six eight seven hundred over all of those lot. Okay, so just checking if it's right, increase by that, decrease by that, and when you do this, smash in your calculator, guys, and you should get an exact answer of, oh, that's nice, 650,000, yeah, that makes sense, dollars. All right, number eight, so a block of wood has a mass of 3.5 kg. The block, uh, the wood has density 0.65 kilograms per meter cube. Okay, before I move on, if you're not sure what the, if you forgot the formula of density, it is a little trick you can do. Just look at the units it's using. It's saying kg per meter cube. So kg, as we know, is mass. So we say density equals mass over, and a meter cubed, well, this is a volume. Okay, it's not a length, it's a volume because it's cubed. And there you go. So this is what, what they have. So this is the density formula. Now, A, work out the volume of the block of wood. All right, so this is very straightforward. You just want to make V the subject here. So you could just swap V and D around. So you're going to have V equals M over D. Remember, you multiply V and you divide D. And now we have the figures. We have the mass. Okay, before I jump straight ahead, the mass, so notice how, okay, never mind. So you've got the mass, which is um, 3.5 kg over the, um, the density, which is 0 0.65. Dividing these lot, so 3.5 or 0.65, and 
to three significant figures, you should get about 5.3a. Okay, I think that's it. And this is volume, so meter cubed. So you just take the unit which you're not using. All right, yep, meter cubed. Now next one, change a speed of 630 kilometers per hour to a speed in meters per second. All right, so let's write it down. So 300, 630 kilometers per hour into something meters per second. Uh, not too bad. So first we change 630 kilometers into meters. If you want to do that, you multiply kilometers by um, a thousand because there is for for there is a thousand meters in one kilometer. So it'd be 630,000. Okay, and let's put meters there. Now for one hour, so this is literally one hour, right? We need to convert one hour into seconds. So we need to know that firstly, we have 60 minutes in, in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. So technically that'll be 60 times 60 seconds, which is one hour by the way, guys. And yeah, that's, that's actually it. So now we just divide these numbers. So it's gonna be 630,000 over 60 times 60, and that's 175, then you write meters per second. Just copy those letters down. Now, this is literally one of my favorite pair, favorite questions to do. So, nine, solve the simultaneous equations. All right. So, what you want to do here, and this is both linear, by the way, there's no square terms anywhere, is that you want to make the coefficients, in other words, the numbers in front of the x or the y is the same. I'm going to pick x because it's kind of easy to double 2x to get 4x. Okay, so let's do that right now. So what you want to do is double the second equation, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss it as we do it. Yeah, this will give us four x minus two y equals eighteen. So remember, when you double, when you times it by two, you times the whole system by two. And the first equation, well, it's going to be the same because we're not multiplying that. Okay, now what to do here is that all you really have to worry about now is literally subtract these pair of equations, because the purpose is. Is because you have two different variables in the same equation, you cannot solve it. So the idea is to eliminate a variable so you have only one letter left. So it's easy to solve. Now, since we've got two 4x's, we can just subtract this equation to eliminate the 4x, right? So this minus the whole thing. Let's put red. So subtracting 4x, of course, that's the aim. You get nothing. So we can actually just write, leave, leave it blank. Then you've got 5y minus minus 2y. So that's a double minus. So it's a plus of so 5y, 5y plus 2y is 7y and then 4 take away 18 is minus 14 yeah and then this is easy now to find y divide by 7 you get minus 2 done now in order to find x well just pick any of these four equations so let's pick um doo -doo -doo. let's pick this easy looking one 2x minus y equals 9 okay so what you want to do here now now that you've got the value of y we can plug it back in so minus so this this would mean you would get 2x instead of minus y would be plus 2 equals 9 because y is minus 2. Uh, subtracting 2 across you get 2x equals 7 and dividing by 2 x equals 7 over 2 or 3.5 if you if you really care. All right, number 10. <clears throat> so the line L is drawn in the grid. So here's the straight line. So this is like, this is basically an equation which is part of y equals mx plus c by the way yeah with some gradient and some intercept find an equation for l oh really is that it nice so two easy ways to do this yeah and literally you should this is something we just need to know in the back of our mind you just pick two random points in the line my tips always pick the intercept because it's nice and any other point that actually has a whole number like two and four so let's label these points so this is of course zero one and this one is 2, 4. Now, when you use y equals mx plus c, the c bit is the y-intercept. So you can see it hits the y-intercept at 1. So now immediately, our equation becomes mx plus 1. Now, to find the gradient, there's a beautiful formula you could do. The gradient formula is this. It's the change in the y coordinate. So you do, uh, let me write the formula down. So it would be change in the y over the change in the x. So the triangle means delta, which means change in Greek. Yep. So change in y should be 4 take away 1 is uh, 3. And 2 take away nothing is 2. And yeah, we've done it. <laughs> so the gradient is 3 over 2. So y equals 3 over 2x plus 1. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that was easy. All right, number 11. 
So 20 students took a science test and a maths test. Both were marked out 50. And below gives information about the results. So you've got the median and the interquartile range. So the medium, as a reminder, is um, pretty much the, the middle student. So if you had to list up all the marks in order from the lowest mark to the highest mark, the person who got the person the mark bang in the middle represents the median the median student. So you can see 27 was bang in the middle for science and maths was slightly lower, bang in the middle 24.5. The IQR means that you take the first quarter, instead of finding the middle, you find the first quarter of the mark and the third quarter and you subtract it to have a difference of 18. Same applies for maths. So we have to look at the, if we have to compare these results and make some comparisons, all we can really talk about is firstly, give a discussion about the median and give a discussion about the, IQ, the interquartile range, which we're going to call it, which we're going to call it IQR, yeah? That's just a shorthand way of saying it. So first things first, let's talk about IQR, yeah? We can say that the spread of the marks in science was far greater than the spread of maths because the maths result seems more consistent. So more people, because it's lower here, it means that the difference between the first and third quarter of students were closer in marks. So let's say this, we can say that the spread of the marks in science were far greater than maths. So you can put a bracket IQR of 18 is bigger than IQR of 11. Okay, obviously we shouldn't write like that. Actually. It should be IQ of science bigger than IQ of maths. And we can say that the median mark is 2.5 marks higher than for in science and maths. So median mark was higher. Oh well, oops. Um, was higher in science. Um, than maths by the difference was 2.5 marks okay I think that's, that should be okay right number 12 guys so simplify n to the power 0 well this is any easy anything to the power 0 is always 1 it's never 0 okay be very careful yeah this is not uh, you're not times them by 0 any power to nothing means it's like you're dividing by itself, so it's always 1. Okay. Now B. Simplify 3x squared y power 5 all powered by 3. This just means you give everybody in the power a 3. So it'd be 3 cubed. Uh, x gets a 3 on, next to the 2. And y gets an extra power of a 3. Okay. And simplifying this. Well, you can just use a calculator for 3 cubed. That will give us uh, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 x to the power 2 times 3 is 6, y to the power 5 times 3 is 15, easy yeah? Now c, factorize fully 2e squared minus 18, so let's have a look, when I use the word fully it means it's probably two steps, so the first step is, is to see the common, any common factors, where well, they're both in a 2 times table, so divide this by 2, you're going to get e squared minus 9, now one thing to observe here, is that this form here is known as a difference of two different squares, as, as in a square number or square term minus another square. So what we have to do is this is a double bracket problem. So we firstly square root e squared, you get e on both sides. Square root of 9, you get 3 plus minus 3. And that's it, you've literally fully factorized it like that. Okay, so e, pl e plus root e minus 3. Yep, that's it. Now D. Oops. So make R the subject of this equation here. Now, when you have a square root, you clear the square root, yeah? So the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So if you square both sides, you're going to get m squared equals, and of course, the square root now actually disappears because you cancel it. Now, and another thing you want to do is always clear the fraction. So you've got 5r at the bottom. Let's multiply by 5r. So Times in m squared by 5r, you get 5 and m squared r, or however you want to write it, equals 6a plus r. Again, the 5r is gone now. Now, here's the tricky bit. Because you've got r's on both sides and they don't look like they're compatible, the trick is, is to firstly move all the, the subject terms, in other words, the r terms, to one side. So let's move this plus r to the left. So you're going to have something like 
5m squared r minus r because you move it across equals 6a. Now the final step, now with the main, now the key step here is to realize because you've got r's on both sides, you can factorize the r out. So yeah, so factorize the r out, you're going to be left with 5m squared minus, if there's no more r's left, no more, it's just going to be 1 because r divided by r is 1 equals 6a. And now finally, if you want to isolate the r because you want to make r the subject, let's divide this big term across. So you're going to have something like r equals 6a divided by that big term, 5m squared minus 1. And that's it guys, I think we're done.